What am I getting myself into, you know? So <laughs> it's always Can I tell you why I was nervous? Sure. Because you're because you're incredibly funny, incredibly bright, smart. I, I think bright sounds condescending, so I don't mean it that way. I, I, get I, where you're I just from. mean bright. Let's see, like you know, that <laughs> You have really beautiful eyes. I noticed today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you do. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. But I was afraid you'd yeah. be like, I'm gonna take that boomer down. <laughs> Only if you were yeah. malicious and powerful, then I would really go after you. Yeah. But you, you seem like you got your head in the right spot. So. Oh well, thank we're, you. We're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. I, have, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that's my only goal. I don't like to attack little people unless they like really come after me. But like my goal with everything is to just like go after big, powerful people that have ruined our lives for the past like couple decades here and have just made everything go to shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, one, are one, we allowed to swear on this thing? The, the floor is yours. I saw your video. Oh North then how about you dude? Oh North then how about you? Yeah? Oh North then how about you dude? Oh North then how about you? Maybe you could just talk about making that video and yeah. then what you saw in it and how many times have you watched it? <laughs> many times. <laughs> but I but I but I've watched other videos of his also I've now watched many, many of his videos. And um you know, and that's and that's why I'm here because I wouldn't I wouldn't want to like quote waste waste time, you know, if it didn't seem like it was something yeah. good and positive and interesting. All those details are amazing. Yeah. You know, and also seeing like all the comments from people who live here who's who are psyched about it, you know, like and like it's a it's a parody in a way, but it's mm -hmm. also like see I wasn't really clear when you're like, Oh, this is an homage, you know, and I was like I don't know, like, in a way, it feels like mocking. Uh-huh. So I would love to hear you talk about the mocking part of it and how yeah. that and how that appeals. It seems to really appeal to people. I don't know. For all I know, it's people who live in the old North End who, like, came here from wherever and were UVM students, like, yeah. that are saying, we, I live in the old North End, but, like, I'm talking about, you know. Uh, if you dive in deep to the YouTube comments and the Instagram comments and even the Reddit con comments, You'll see people from all over Vermont that are just like, I grew up with Donnie, like yeah. he was my brother or like he was my father. A lot of DMs to me as well, yeah. um, where people are just like, one, like Donnie is one of my family members and like this yeah, is the funniest, <laughs> it's the funniest thing because like they have joked for years about these people to their friends and same with me, but like no one has brought it to a green screen and produced it into comedy that makes sense like the trailer park boys or letter kenny or even like sketch comedy like snl or in that matter so like seeing it humanized and brought to that is like it's sort of validating for their experience growing up they're like yeah somebody understands what i grew up with and like this is fucking hilarious um and so like when I make those Donnie stuff, it's like part of it is healing for me, but I'm really out there to get people to follow me so they follow the main videos. So like the Donnie character is like, yeah, it's a fun distraction for me and it's something different. But like what I've been telling people is they come for Donnie, they stay for Johnny. And they get in like, my goal is to get everybody who's affected by these issues to watch my videos and to like, actually know what's going on around them so like yeah maybe somebody like you know who is in that situation still in the old north end found me from a donnie video and then they watched the thing on slumlords and they're like holy crap i never knew that like the cost of living was this messed up here it's that fucking time again but ask donnie anything that you want you got a fucking question i'll fucking answer it tell tell you what you ask donnie i, I got you bud so donnie's always been a side character from my main sh series which is the political stuff and it's always been a fun gateway he's a gateway character and what so do you mean by that? so a lot of the issues that i talk about affect people that are in you know poor situations and don't necessarily know how to change that and don't follow local politics and that's the biggest problem with a lot of uh parish areas or small towns they don't 
there's no way to engage them in that stuff and the stuff that's out there right now is boring as fuck and yeah. like uh, so Donnie what Donnie does not only does he give me something else to do creatively which is fun and totally different but what Donnie does is Donnie speaks to those people it's like totally if, true. if you grow up think, in yeah. the, if you grow up in those situations and you actually listen to the lyrics that I'm making it's stuff that we have all heard and people in those situations will joke about with their friends it's stuff that I joked about when I was like you know single digits or preteen or teenager and well, t- can you can you tell me what you mean by that yeah like you know we make fun of uh, you know and this would all be shit happening to us, like child services getting involved and stuff, mm-hmm. and just like dudes that will like say one thing but do another, you know. So like Donnie is a troublemaker himself, and he's in and out of jail. But then he like criticizes his girlfriend for doing the same shitty things, but like a little differently, you know. Yeah. So like he's making fun of his girlfriend for like moving out of here but moving to Milton and living with a guy that like steals his kid's PlayStation 2 for drug money and stuff like that. And that like this is all shit that happened to me and my friends. And like everyone in rural Vermont knows these things, but no one talks about it. Even you look at like Rusty Dweeves, who is like an idol of mine in in a sense, because I I feel like I'm kind of picking up his mantle right now with that Donnie character and really going Mm. full force with it. But like even he would veer away from certain things. Yeah, it's very different. And when I was a kid, I would always criticize him. I'd be like, man, you're fucking missing like half of the shit. Like you're not talking about people going in and out of jail and like dealing drugs and shit. Like that's the real Vermont that I know and that I grew up with. So when I make these Donnie videos, they hit hard because people understand that and no one has spoken to it because they haven't had the balls. But when they watch it, they understand like the amount of detail that I've put into it can only come from somebody that has been through it. So I, I didn't know anything about Donnie and I know Uriah a little bit mm-hmm. and I was just like, what the fuck, man? Are they making fun of, of Vermonters? Like I... <laughs> That's a big squirrel. I, um, so, I didn't grow up in Vermont, but I grew up, first part of my life, first little bit of my life was not very poor. We were kind of regular middle class, and then when my folks got divorced, we were very, very, very poor. And, um, and I ended up supporting my family when I was 16 years old, and like I was telling Johnny like scraping mold off bread for sandwiches and eating hamburger helper without the hamburger, you know, and I can go on, you know. Mm-hmm. My mom we had a we had a two bedroom house with four kids. My mom slept on the couch, she worked twelve hours a day, and uh, the, us kids shared a room. Really small rooms. Been there. And I know a lot of people have it a lot worse, so you know, but I feel protective of what what my family went through and the judgments that people put on us. Mm -hmm. I also feel like really pissed off when, you know, like educated people make fun of people Mm -hmm. who are, and I, and I know now that, that, that's, I really totally love what you're doing actually. (laughs) (laughs) But my first reaction was, are you making, are these guys making fun? And and Mm -hmm. in fact, somebody who I know, like, is it right? Are they making fun of, you know, Vermonters? And somebody said, no, no, it's an homage. And I was like, it seems classist to mm-hmm. me. I didn't know that. He, I didn't know that he came from there, but I knew that somebody paid for the video, most likely. Me. Yeah. And, you know, and and people, you know, like my family and myself, as a kid, you know, it was just survival mode. There yep. was no room for there oh, was yeah. no room for that. There was no like room for preaching the choir or or even politics. It's like mm-hmm. I can't even think about that shit. I just got to get food on the table. I'm no feed, I was feeding like my brothers and sister and my mom who was ill at the time, you know. So I didn't have time to like get into politics. And so I'm like looking at this stuff and I'm just like, what the fuck? Who is this little shit? <laughs> <laughs> that was pissed. so great. I'm from the old fucking North End, buddy. You know. I fucking grew up here, my dad fucking grew up here, my kid's gonna fucking grow up here too, you can't remove me, you know? Yeah. Fuck you all, fuck the courts, fuck Miro, fuck you Crystal. Yeah. So when you make a character and you do an homage, to get people on the side of the character, you have to make them root for the character. 
And that's the difference between punching down and making fun of somebody mm -hmm. or really building them up. That's like why people like Trailer Park Boys. Like they do a bunch of shitty things, but like you're rooting for them in the end. And that's and like you love these characters. And that's that's how homage works in my sense. So when I when I do this stuff, I put it like I made sure he had great production and it was a catchy song and like you wanted to root for him in, in that song. And so that's like I was very conscious of that to really like make that a focal point which I think a lot of people understood through that context yeah. I think a lot of people don't okay. think about it that like crazy but they get the sub the subtext and they're like oh I like this guy I like Donnie on it and I think a lot of people I think some people miss that at first glance which is totally fine because we're me. all we're all human <laughs> and it, it's fine and you your heart was in the right place and I knew that when you commented that's why I loved your comment no because oh, there's cool. a hint of there's a hint of maybe punching down on Totally. Crystal or punching, right? Well, so you got to wait for the second song yeah, because yeah, yeah. the second song is all about Crystal's comeback. So, awesome. Yeah. I, ha I have to say, and I commented, I commented because you, I saw something in your thing when I was kind of doing my research on who you were, you know? Yeah. Um, that one moment where she like rolls her eyes. Do you know? Do, do you know the scene I'm talking? Oh, I do. It's so awesome. Yeah, I was she's just like, great. Oh, she's awesome. She's amazing. She's yeah. such a great actress, and she's one of my official contracted employees now. All North End, how about you? All North End, how about you? The thing that you asked me, why did I get so involved in local? Like, how did I start getting involved in it? Peg made a great point earlier. Um, when you grow up in these situations, you don't have time to focus on anything because you're trying to survive. So when I grew up, politics wasn't a thing in my house. It was all about like just what was going on in our little world. And so when I, when I emancipated myself from that situation and I started exploring the world in my 20s, you know, I realized at one point I had a lot of issues. So a lot of my 20s was really working on myself and to, you know, get myself to a point where I felt like I was a good productive person and I could move past a lot of the darkness that was in my past that was kind of like plaguing me with my own social interactions and relationships. So w once I got to that point in my like later 20s, I felt, I felt a lot of guilt because there was there's still a lot of people hurting and I felt like I was finally in a position where like I could actually feel that guilt and I just started paying attention more to like what was going on around me and um, it just fueled this fire within me to just see people struggling and to not have any control and it just like pisses you the fuck off when you're like from it and you're such when you're from such a raw family and like that's what you come from it just like it burns something deep within me and it just like i just like want to do something about it and so um i i went through this whole thing where i was like i'm gonna like create this character that is gonna have like a cult of personality around him Something clicked while I started doing my first videos, which were just commercials for businesses that never asked for them. Catch me bullin' Zoomers. I'm talking about Price Flippin' Chopper here. Founded 1932. Basically, they invented not hunting. Pharmacy. Hot fire buffet. They even got organic stuff for us libtards too. Why do you hate Shaw's? I, I, I want to remember to ask you that. <laughs> Um, Shaw's is the people's place, isn't it? Yeah, so back in the day, and so Shaw's was the nice place, and wow. Price Shopper was where all the homies went. And like, it, you know, it was podunk, it was 24 seven, like, you know, there's people working there missing teeth and shit. And I was like, yo, Price Shopper for life. And so that's kind of like where that joke came from. And it's yeah. a big inside joke with a lot of my close friends. And I've just like kept it to this day. And a lot of people are like, yeah, well, Price Shopper is like market 32 now and it's all I nice know, and stuff. And I'm like, fancy. I was like, yeah, well, that's kind of similar to my story. Came up like being podunk <laughs> and now I'm like presentable and people wouldn't even tell that I was from there. So I have like, I have this, uh, like I wanted to create a cult personality and I realized that nobody was trying to go for like the crown of Burlington to be the number one townie. And like <laughs> all of my humor and all of my jokes were all about being a townie. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna like, I'm not gonna put on some facade and like talk about like metaphors of oceans and shit like that. I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna say what I joke around about and just like see how that translates. And 
ever since I made that decision and just decided to like just be the number one townie, um, people have just identified with it and flocked to it. And it's great for me because I barely have to do anything except turn my personality up maybe like a couple <laughs> pegs here. But if you watch season one, which is like 17 episodes, that starts out with the commercials and then ends up more political, you know, finding my footing. Um, I made this my fourth video in was about the pit and I thought it would be really funny you know all the arguments around it were like people were for them all or against them all and everybody was hating on this pit no matter what side you were on and I thought it would be really funny if like there was a group of people in town that were just like in love with the pit and were like standing up for the pit in general as kind of like a way to kind of make fun of the pit in a way. I just ordered two pit mugs by the way. Yeah. Get yours at Johnny's uh, My uh, Teespring, Teespring merch site. Yeah, merch site. T -T. Call me Pistradamus, motherfuckers, because I fucking called it. I'm Johnny Wanzer, and yup, we got an update on the downtown pit, y'all. Th okay, I think I, th I found a new medium here. <laughs> and so I started exploring stuff that uh, interests me, but I realized that like when I would talk about Burlington issues, I had a lot more fun writing about it, and I got a lot more views. And so I was like, well, here's my niche here. And so... Uh, I started being really critical of Miro and everything that he was doing because I'm not a fan of him. I am a progressive and he is a neoliberal and he is just he like, is awful. He's just the definition of everything that I hate about. I just can't even believe it. That stereo Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he's the definition of everything I hate about stereotypical left leaners. Oh you know? my God, except he's not even pretending to yeah. care. Yeah, and so I pissed him off one too many times and uh, I was taking a break from my videos anyways and I got a nice little letter in the mail <laughs> that was just like, hey, you need to like stop saying these lies about Miro and I'm like, uh, I'm not well, saying lies, well, I have. Where did the letter come from? From the city. A lot of my stuff is, uh, is parody and a lot of my stuff is, I put the sources oh, literally in the parody video. Law. I saw yeah, that yeah, you mentioned yeah. that, yeah. So like, um, I ended up, uh, I had some lawyers recommended to me and I asked them about it and they watched all my stuff and they're like, no, you're fine. He's a public figure. You can talk like literally if you watch late night shows, that's all they do is they talk right. shit about political figures. I, you know, at that point I was planning on like really upping the ante. So I was like, out of nowhere, I was like, it's season two. So, and people were like, we were in season one, and I'm like, yep, yeah, so season one's over, now it's season two, <laughs> and you're gonna see my videos just, like, transcend here. So now, like... Now, the cost of living in the 17 outdoor gear store Wonderland is about 21% higher than the U.S. average, specifically 47% higher with housing. Because of that, HUD considers you lower class if you make under 50k a year. Now, most of y'all living in the college ghetto, I didn't name it, ain't gotta worry since you're retail worker harassing daddy. Six figures cover this as you get your eco-science major. But the 60% of us workers he harasses make under 50k, averaging around 25k. Yeah, I'm saying numbers and shit. I learned a lot from your videos. Yeah. I was so psyched. That's the goal. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in more of the personal stuff. Sure. Let's get into it then. So how did you, when you were growing up, you, I, I saw that you said that um, Donnie and Crystal kind of represent your parents. Yeah. And not so I'm not like, curious, li yeah. not literally probably, yeah. right? But I'm curious about how your politics or what your family politics were and how you came to your politics, because you're like super, you know, aware, et cetera. <laughs> and so what was their, you know, how, how was it when you were growing up? What was that like? Non-existent. Yeah, right, right. Actually, I guess we did say that earlier. Yeah. Uh, Non-existent, so they weren't right wing. If you were to ask me what my mom's political stance is, I could not tell you. I just know that she believes in God. That's I wanted to know yeah. where his, uh, where he, where he discovered his politics. You know? Oh, okay. Well, that yeah, I can get Because my parents, like my I have pictures of me in a parade in Rutherford, New Jersey, mm -hmm. holding flags with the young Republicans that my parents were part of, you know? Yeah. First of all, I want to say, first of all, my mother was like the most beautiful, kind, and loving person anybody could ever meet. And mm -hmm. everybody who ever met her wanted her to be their mother. Mm -hmm. But... 
during this one parade, I remember seeing my parents spit on protesters mm. of the Vietnam War. And I was like, blown away. Like, I, I, I don't know, maybe it was just my dad, but maybe my mom, I can't even imagine my mother doing something like that. But I, maybe that's the moment that I started questioning, what the fuck? Like I was probably 10. Mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, so going, moving away from your, your family's politics or whatever. I'm just curious how that happened for you. Yeah, I mean... But you said they, didn't, they were kind of non-existent, so... Yeah, so they didn't really have politics, but the way that I got into it was, you know, every day before school I'd watch the news, right? Um, and then as I started getting older, I found that I liked watching comedy on TV. And so we had cable television, and, like, I always found myself either watching, like, Comedy Central or something like that. And, you know, I got into shows like The Daily Show back in the day. Oh, my and God, that was the best show. Yeah, I started getting into that stuff. And, it like, you know, and then the friends that I started making, it all kind of just, like... Friends? Yeah, and the friends. <laughs> I watched a lot of friends. And then uh, it just all started making sense to me at a certain point. I was like, oh, I agree with a lot of this. And then, um, yeah, by the time I was... A teenager and playing hardcore shows at 242 like the, my political views were very much set into a left-leaning sort of way I just want to <laughs> yeah I'm just gonna say I'm an really? anarchist yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I just have to just like just put it out there part of the you can <laughs> so, <go>. yeah <laughs> I mean I'm just yeah and I, and I but I'm really happy to to support progressives because they're speaking they're able to speak to people <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. how I felt for years, the same. I was like, no one is left-leaning enough, except Bernie. That's it. This is, so this is another thing, when I'm hearing everybody talking about left-leaning and right-leaning, it's like, that's another like thing that kind of bothers me in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, or me going like, I'm an anarchist. You know, it's like, what does all that really mean? All the kind of, you know, stereotypes again, you know what I mean? I ended up working with a bunch of filmmakers, 20 filmmakers, that made this thing called the Vermont Movie. And I learned a really lot about Vermont's history. And when I-89 came in, things really changed mm -hmm. here. And, you know, there was a whole, like, influx of, um, you know, back to the landers, et cetera, et cetera. And it started really changing the landscape for, you know, the, the Vermonters that were here before. Some, some positive and some negative. Mm -hmm. I have a ton of fans that don't live here or who have never even lived here, but just like following me. Whether it's for the crazy visuals and all the jokes, or it's like I won them over starting with that, but then they were like, oh, this is an interesting story about this dude. Or they like see the concept of what I'm doing and they've never seen it before and it, it interests them. And um, I also post my stuff on Reddit, and a lot of people who want to move to Burlington go to Burlington Reddit to see what's going on. Oh. And so <laughs> I've actually made a lot of friends and fans from people who did exactly that before they moved here. Um, and I've even showed a couple people around who have reached out to me who found my videos on Reddit. So uh, the appeal is there, um, which is cool. That's because cool. like a lot of the stuff I make is tailored for people here but then like these people are like what is this world over here and then they go back and watch everything and they start learning about our, our city which is cool right. so I have plans with each season um, so season two is Burlington centric and my plan is to get people so riled up that people outside of Burlington are demanding videos from me and which is already happening and so my goal... Oh, by man, let me take you to Maple Corner. <laughs> <laughs> so my goal by the end of season two is to basically be the king here. <laughs> but basically have Burlington, all the things that I've ever wanted to say about Burlington, like, out there. And then um, I want to, for season three, I want to go Vermont. And I want to focus on Snobbins. other things. St. Albans. St. Albans. Uh, a lot of things that happen in are in Montpelier. Uh, at the at the uh, government there. I, oh, I thought you were going to talk about Charlios because I oh, yeah. I got kicked out of Charlios <laughs> in the eighties. I've heard so know. many stories of people getting kicked out of Charlios. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> yeah. What do you want people to do watching your videos besides besides just like date on? 
Mariah. Yeah. I will say that I got a lot of people to vote because I told them to. So there's there's a start, which is fantastic. And a lot of people reached out to me and told me that they voted because I, I educated them. And they let, like, that's the start, right? That's a, that's a great start. So, but, you know, that's a really great question. Why do we, like, we watch John Oliver, right? And, like, you know, is it on him to get us to in, to uh, get into these? Not necessarily, no. But what he does is he educates us on what's going on and gives us a unique perspective and a comedic perspective to do that. With a great accent. That. With a great accent. <laughs> and he's he's just a good dude. You research yeah. the guy and you're like, yo, John Oliver's the shit. So uh, for me, my main goal is to just educate people, to get them, like, involved in it. And so then when I see an opportunity to plug something that I really believe in, my followers will go and do it. Like, when I when I made light, and I wasn't the one to break this, but I made, I focused on um, the ex-police chief being on the board of the Howard Center. As soon as I did that, a week later, somebody made a petition to get him out of there. And I told my followers to sign up, and I got them a thousand, fo- a thousand signatures in a day. And two months later, guess what? He's off the board and he moved out of Vermont. So did I do it? I don't know, but I like to just say maybe it helped. <laughs> well, you definitely instigated something. I mean, yeah. how, how does that feel? It feels great because I don't want, like, and Peg, I don't know how you're going to react to this because this is where Angry Johnny comes out. But uh, I don't <laughs> want that fucking trash in my town. I feel like... I feel like this is my uh, town. How do I react? <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I, I, I've been seeing this town change. I see corrupt people come in and take advantage of it, and I'm fucking sick of it. And I don't want that shit in my town anymore. Yeah. And if I have to use my internet trolling powers to to flip this shit upside down to get these people to in the spotlight to make the cockroaches fly out i'm gonna fucking do it and i'll put my name on the line and i'll put my safety on the line i have a question for you as far as the as uh, the the police yeah guy goes um (laughs) there's a part in your video where you're like said so i'm gonna fuck your daughter so i want to talk to you yes in the video, in the music video. Spillane. Oh, the Spillane's dog. Okay, yeah. Oh, it's Spillane's? Oh, I thought it was yeah. police. No, it was Don. Oh, I missed one beat, probably. No, it was Donnie basically, like, saying, yo, you're gonna, to- you're gonna tow my car? Well, fuck you, I'll break in and steal my car back and have sex with your daughters. No, you said you fuck her- his daughters, but, like, I really want to talk to you about that as sure. well, because... You know, there's a really long history of people raping people's daughters and women. Et that was not what more. I was implying. Okay, okay. I took all my weed and abuse of the clink. Now my car's up at Spillane's. I'll break in, no problem, okay? Fuck their daughters that same day. That's a fucking old North way, bud. What were you? I want to hear what you're implying. Um, it's kind of a if it's you, payback. Okay, you're gonna do this. I'm gonna know, fuck your daughter. Sure, if you know. If you know the people that work at Spillane's, you'll know that they're working class and they're <laughs> very similar to who Donnie is. So Donnie's circles overlap with the Spillane workers' circles. Right. And so they he probably, like, knows... Why don't you just go break their windows? I mean, why fuck their daughters? So it's implied that, like, Donnie is, like, a ladies' man to, like, these working class circles. And so, like... He, d- he doesn't, like, go rape them. He's just, like, he okay, knows... not their- rape them. Yeah. He knows their circles and, but like... But it's payback, dude. It's, like, you're, you're, you're implying in the video that, like, you're going to do this, I'm going to fuck your daughter. So there. Like, if there's anything that really got to me in that video, that was it. Yeah. Because I'm a daughter. My daughter's a daughter. Sure. You know? And it's, like, if somebody's pissed off at me, they're going to hurt my daughter. Like, what the fuck is that about? And I understand that you're making a parody and you're making fun of those people, but, like, yeah. why not just go break Spillane's window? It's more of the, uh, so there's more nuance to it. Uh, and I totally get what you're saying, and I totally agree with it. Um, the way that I meant to come off with it is uh, when you live in a small town, everybody knows everybody, right? And so, like... Chances are you know the family of the person like who like owns the towing car com- 
like company, right? right? And you know their kids and you like grew up with them. And you know, uh, he's just, he's just implying that like he has his way within the community where he can like, you know, Mac on, Mac, Mac and like get, get his way with, and just like do what, uh, yeah, I don't know. What does just, Mac mean? Not Mac, I'm know. not finding the I, right words here. I actually don't know what Mac means. Yeah, Sorry. I'm not finding the right words here. I think you um, might have to back out, back down on this one. Yeah, I think I might have to. I think you're gonna have to back down on um, it. It's interesting um, to hear that feedback on it, and you're totally valid with it. And um, I think I could have done a better job at conveying the that. And uh, well, I yeah. feel bad if people uh, take it in that way. Yeah, well, I think what Megan said yeah. helps it make more sense to me, honestly, yeah. because you are being that character who would think like that. Yeah. But again, you know, my take even on like, you know, whatever, like making music is like what you put out there sometimes just adds to the thing. Yeah. You know? I feel weird like defending like Donnie kind of being misogynistic <laughs> because like I am not I'm like I'm like the I'm like a fucking loner and like to just pe leave people alone <laughs> like to leave service people alone and just let them do their thing and just like yeah yeah it's it, it becomes weird when it becomes like a character and artistic expression and like how authentic you want to make it like obviously if I really wanted to make him authentic like I would put in racism because yeah. there's a lot of that and yeah. I would put in some words that I don't like using at all um, and I consciously decide to leave that stuff out um, and if people don't like that I mean, go fuck themselves but mm -hmm. you know because it's my art but right. uh, yeah. I do have one more thing <laughs> yeah sure which is and maybe you don't want to talk about it okay there was, oh my I was, god I went down the rabbit hole of looking at not you know bunch of YouTube videos, but there was a one particular Instagram post where you're sitting looking at a phone and you're talking about mental health. Depression, mental health. And I was like, is this staged? No. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, it's, the picture was, but yeah. the what I'm talking about wasn't. Yeah. Um, no, I'm a big mental health advocate. I have panic disorder and... Um, I'm really sensitive to that kind of stuff. Like, I'm not like, you can never talk about it. But uh, I think mental health is overlooked in this country, especially in workplaces and supporting people with it. And just like being able to prescribe stuff with people. A lot of, a lot of this stuff you have to pay out of pocket for. Um, and I think it's not taken as serious as possible. Um, yeah, I'm a big advocate for it. And so that post was very genuine. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see that one. There's a picture of me in a flannel, and I'm like looking at my phone. <laughs> yeah, no, I have to I have panic disorder also. Yeah. It's so funny when they write that down, and that's what it is. It's like <laughs> that's what you have. Yeah, it uh, it can be debilitating some days. Um, yeah. But you find ways as as you get older, you find ways to uh, to live with it and to deal with it, and so it becomes easier to go through the motions because you're so used to it, but it still doesn't make it, it still is hard to deal with. So when people like talk about these these things, like I, I really feel for them. Johnny, have you gotten to see any of Peg's music yet? Put mm -hmm. it on the spot. I listened to her whole album the other day and then I went Which and one? watched some videos. The latest one you released. Which is an old Or you old just, yeah, it sounded like it was older, but it sounded like you just, like, re-released yeah, yeah, yeah. it, maybe? Well, Jer just, yeah. Jer just uh, remastered it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I listened to it. It's cool. It's like... It's old, you know. Yeah, it sounds like uh, late 80s, early 90s, kind of like um, 
that whole uh, like femme movement that was happening that was like really awesome and empowering of just like female artists that were like really just fucking owning the space in the early 90s it like gave me like a lot of vibes of that I didn't even know I didn't even know there was a femme movement in the 90s yeah like you know the whole like uh, yeah the whole like Tori Amos I'm not saying that you're this but like but I'm saying like I am before that definitely there was this whole explosion (laughs) of just uh, female artists with an acoustic guitar that were just like killing it yeah did you have anything Um, yeah, nothing, nothing really. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. I guess I would say I'm glad I got to meet you. And yeah. Stuff. And I still feel like it'd be nice to have a conversation, not in front of a camera. We will. <laughs> Thank you both for being here anyway. Yeah, yeah no, this is fun. Thanks for having us. Yeah.